You are listening to IBG News Golden our podcast. News read by Mirai. Kolkata 29th November 2022. Countdown begins to the much anticipated 2022. Tata Steel Kolkata 25K on 18th December. CWG 2022 Marathon Champion Victor Kiplangat and defending TSK 25K champion and course record holder Leonard Basotin headline the international elite field. Ratna's Julan Goswami and Subhashree Ganguly to cheer Ananda run participants. Register now to be a part of the only world athletics elite label 25K road race. Kolkata 29th November an era of excitement and anticipation has engulfed Kolkata as the country's cultural capital prepares for the much anticipated 7th edition of Eastern India's biggest running festival the 2022 Tata Steel Kolkata 25K on 18th December the only world athletics elite label road race over this distance the tsk 25k's aims accredited course is carefully crafted to take in some of the city's majestic sights as the participants go past the raj bhavan the eden gardens under the havda railway bridge over the hooghly river fort williams golf course and the victoria memorial before returning to the historic red road finish line The countdown commenced today at the Oberoi Grand, the event's hospitality partner, with Sarvesh Kumar, Chief Corporate Communications, India and C, of title sponsor Tata Steel, Amit Sinha, Country Head, Branch Banking, IDFC First Bank of Associate Sponsor IDFC First Bank unveiling the Seiko Race Clock along with the TSK 25K Ratnas, cricket legend Julan Goswami and the reigning Queen of Bengali Cinema Subhashri Ganguly. The 100,000 US dollars prize fund race will be headlined by the 2022 Commonwealth Games marathon champion Victor Kiplangat of Uganda, defending champion and course record holder Leonard Basotin of Kenya and two-time Tokyo marathon winner Birhanu Legese of Ethiopia in the men's international elite field, and the 2022 Tokyo marathon runner-up Ashik Baker of Ethiopia and the 2019 TSK 25K runner-up Desi Jisa of Bahrain. green in the women's section the international elite runners will be further incentivized by an event record bonus of 3000 us dollars chanakya chaudhary vice president corporate services tata steel said the significance of mass participation sport like the tsk 25k lies in its inclusivity as there is a distance for everyone to participate in and a platform for all to take part Registration is in full swing for the biggest race of Eastern India. Don't miss out. Be a part of this joyful experience this December. The 25k and 10k finishers will receive a medal and a timing certificate. Ananda run participants will get a participation medal and certificate. The champions with disability and senior citizens run participants will be given a participation certificate. Tata Steel Kolkata 25K has over the years invited eminent sporting personalities to inspire the runners to give their best. Two-time Grand Slam singles champion Mary Pierce is the international event ambassador and will spur on the runners along with the events Ratna's Julan and Subhashree. Sports are fast running out for the 25K Open 10K Ananda Run, 4.5K Senior Citizens Run, 2.3K and the Champions with Disability, 2.3K categories. Registration will remain open until 9th December at Tata Steel Kolkata 25K. Procom In Amit Sinha, Country Head, Branch Banking, IDFC First Bank, said, for many seasoned as well as first-time runners, the countdown for the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K marks a special time, because by now, they have prepared and are ready to conquer the distance. To capture this sense of preparation and anticipation, IDFC First Bank's theme for the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K is Hush Journey to the Start. We are delighted to be a part of a journey which for many inspires wellness, energy, camaraderie and an inclination to be outdoors. 
The Tata Steel Kolkata 25K also resonates well with the IDFC first brand as we are a full stack new age bank that powers the hush journey to the start of millions of people from entrepreneurs and small businesses to individuals home buyers and first time investors making their financial lives better You are listening to IBG News Golden a podcast news read by Mirai Debashish Kumar MLA and MMIC Sports Parks and Squares and Advertisements Kolkata Municipal Corporation said TSK 25K is returning after a gap of 2 years For 2 years we did not have Durga Puja properly also This event is part of Kolkata's heartbeat and I'm sure more than 15000 people will run this time I call the people of Kolkata to come out with new energy and run We have been with this event from the beginning and this year also we will give full support to the event. Brig R. K Singh Divai GOC, Bengal Area Headquarter Indian Army, said, running is part of the blood of Indian Army. We get up in the morning and run and wind up the day running. So this event is very close to our heart. But 16,000 people is too less for this city. I urge Kolkata to wake up and run. Julan and Subhashri will be cheering participants of the Ananda run, the soul of the event and a celebration of the spirit of Bengal. Advance your new year resolution. Begin your fitness journey with the Ananda run, a great place to start. And for all the runners out there, run for what brings you happiness. See you at the start line, Julan said. Chubashri has called on the people of Bengal to turn the Ananda run into a family outing. Come out and participate with your loved ones. Draw inspiration and inspire others. Embrace a healthy lifestyle. I'm be cheering for you, she said. Vijay Diva's trophy in a show of solidarity with the services and to celebrate Vijay Diva's which falls during the week of the event. The TSK 25K is honored to have the wholehearted participation of the Eastern Command. Instituted in 2018, it remains an integral part of the running festival. The trophy is inspired by the historic Vijay Smarak and is a rolling trophy. Vijay Diva's trophy is contested between the Indian Army, Indian Navy, and the Indian Air Force with a total of 30 teams. Each team will have 3 members running the 25k and the aggregate of their timings will determine the winner. The top 3 teams stand to win 60000 rupees, 42000 rupees and 30000 rupees respectively. The Mirchi Get Active Expo. The expo is a one-stop destination for health and fitness enthusiasts. The 3-day expo starts on Thursday, 15 December at the Khudiram Anushilan Kendra. It will remain open from 10:30 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Saturday. In addition to bid collection and bid timing tag verification, the expo will provide opportunities for runners to get valuable advice from experts, trainers, doctors and more in preparation for the big day. All confirmed participants will receive a goodie bag at the expo in addition to the running bib while the 25k participants will also get a race day tea The 25k and 10k finishers will receive a medal and a timing certificate Ananda run participants will get a participation medal and certificate The champions with disability and senior citizens run participants will be given a participation certificate Vivek Singh JT MD Procom International said we are thrilled to present the 7th edition of the Tata Steel Kolkata 25K after a 2 year pandemic forced break It is an event that has grown to be a part of the fabric of the city and a beacon for running in eastern India With the support from all our sponsors and partners we have strived to create a magical experience for our running community See you all on race day You are listening to IBG News Golden Hour podcast news read by Billy Joey. Energy security support to Ukraine. Office of the spokesperson. 
In the midst of Russia's continued brutal attacks against Ukraine's energy infrastructure, Secretary of State Blinken announced today during a meeting of the G7 Plus on the margins of the NATO ministerial in Bucharest that the United States government is providing over $53 million to support acquisition of critical electricity grid equipment. This equipment will be rapidly delivered to Ukraine on an emergency basis to help Ukrainians persevere through the winter. This supply package will include distribution transformers, circuit breakers, surge arresters, disconnectors, vehicles and other key equipment. This new assistance is in addition to $55 million in emergency energy sector support for generators and other equipment to help restore emergency power and heat to local municipalities impacted by Russia's attacks on Ukraine's power system. We will continue to identify additional support with allies and partners, and we are also helping to devise long-term solutions for grid restoration and repair, along with our assistance for Ukraine's effort to advance the energy transition and build an energy system decoupled from Russian energy. Since Russia's further invasion on February 24, working together with Congress, the administration has provided nearly $32 billion in assistance to Ukraine, including $145 million to help repair, maintain, and strengthen Ukraine's power sector in the face of continued attacks. We also have provided assistance in areas such as EU integration and regional electricity trade, natural gas sector support to maximize resource development, support for nuclear safety and security, and humanitarian relief efforts to help Ukrainians to overcome the impacts of energy shortages. Since 2014, the United States has provided over $160 million in technical support to strengthen Ukraine's energy security, including to strengthen EU interconnectivity, increase energy supply diversification, and promote investments in energy efficiency, renewable energy, and clean energy technologies and innovation. Much of this support has helped prepare Ukraine for its eventual interconnection with Europe's and SOE electricity grid, including the island mode test in February 2022 that not only demonstrated Ukraine's progress in meeting the EU's technical requirements, but also proved to be critical considering Russia's subsequent military activity aimed at disrupting power supplies and distribution in Ukraine. Specific examples of U.S. energy security support this year include you said. Based on consultations with Ukrainergo, relevant municipalities, and the ministries of energy, regions, and infrastructure in Ukraine, USAID is responding to nearly $80 million of high-priority energy sector procurement needs, focused on the areas of emergency power generation, electric system repair, natural gas, and heating. Procured and delivered approximately $23 million of items to support Ukraine's energy sector. This support includes backup generators, first aid and body armor equipment for utility workers, mobile boiler houses, and miles of piping and associated equipment for heating networks. Currently finalizing procurement of $10.6 million of electrical equipment for the restoration of high-voltage substations as well as heavy equipment for power system repairs in five municipalities. Approximately $46 million of additional procurements underway with expected delivery dates in 2023. These procurements are focused on provision of mobile boiler houses and related equipment as well as additional repair materials for the electric power system. We expect this assistance to provide heating for 7 million civilians in 19 oblasts, beginning later this winter. Provided modeling, analytical, and methodological technical assistance to Ukrainergo that helped ensure successful completion of island mode test on February 24, 2022. Emergency synchronization with European Network of Transmission System Operators for Electricity, NSOE, on March 16, 2022. Launch of commercial exports in June 2022. Retuning of Ukraine's generation fleet in order to fulfill Ukraine's requirement from the NSOE catalog of measures. Improve the flexibility and resilience of the gas transmission system by Procuring and providing training on upgraded national dispatch software. Delivering a mobile backup dispatch center. Completing a financial stress test and financial model of the impact of the war on GTSO operations and recommendations for remediation. In cooperation with the Energy Community Secretariat, you said engaged energy regulator, NERC, to reconsider emergency measures to suspend the competitive electricity market trading. Provided analytical and technical support to the RADA subcommittee on energy that resulted in Passage of the law on energy storage, creating a market-based regime for energy storage aligned with the European regulations. 
Market Monitoring and Surveillance Legislation, e. g. Remit, passing its first reading. A second reading expected in December 2022. Passage of the law establishing corporate power purchase agreements for renewable energy. In support of USAID Administrator Power's commitment of $55 million to support winter preparation, USAID analyzed winter heating supply and demand and prepared a plan to assist local municipalities with emergency heat systems, including mobile heating units, heating tents, and pipelines and advanced procurement of these systems in close cooperation with the municipal governments. Of that, the following has been delivered. 2,200 generators to communities, district heating companies, and health facilities across the country. Equipment to Kyiv Teplo and Ergo, Kyiv's district heating company, that allowed them to restore service to 22,000 customers and establish 1,000 emergency heating points across the city. Service Procurement Authority for the Ukrainian Energy Support Fund, established in April 2022 by the European Union's Energy Community Secretariat and Ukraine's Ministry of Energy. Developed a financial model for liquidity support to Ukrainian electricity market and key Ukrainian entities Ukrainergo, Guaranteed Buyer, Energotom, and Ukrydroenergo. Continuously analyzed balance sheets and cash flows of electricity and gas transmission system operators and their regulatory tariffs. Analyzed financial impact of the war for renewable energy generation and financial liabilities for Ukrainian entities Guaranteed Buyer and Ukrainergo. Prepared emergency modeling for electricity and gas sectors. Utilized the detailed NSOE model for static and power flow simulations and system reliability analyzes for several contingency scenarios. Using the gas system simulator for winter gas need analyzes. Department of Energy, DOE. With the increased attacks on Ukraine's electricity grid and energy infrastructure in October, DOE worked with the Ukrainian Ministry of Energy and DOE National Laboratories to collate, vet, and help prioritize lists of emergency electricity equipment for grid repair and stabilization. Engaged at the CEO level U. S. Private sector and public utilities and equipment manufacturers to identify $35 million of available electricity grid equipment in the United States compatible with the Ukrainian system for emergency delivery. Identified $17.5 million to support purchase and transportation of this equipment. With support from Congress, initiated work on full integration of Ukraine with NSOE to support resumption of Ukrainian energy exports to other European countries in the region, including funding for energy infrastructure analysis, collection of satellite data and analysis for system mapping, and work on cybersecurity. Initiated work on a new dynamic model of interdependent gas and power systems of Europe and Ukraine to advance identification and mitigation of critical vulnerabilities. Delivered emergency diesel fuel and other critical materials needed for safe operation of Ukrainian nuclear power plants, as well as initiated the purchase of three truck-mounted emergency diesel backup generators to be delivered to improve plant safety in the event of the loss of off-site power. U.S. Department of State Building on eight years of technical engagement, the State Department continued to provide technical support to Naftogaz and Ukragas Vito Bovania to advance corporate governance reform, increase domestic gas production, provide strategic planning, and assess critical subsurface and above-ground technical issues that impact the company's core business functions. The State Department is developing new programs focused on emissions abatement, decarbonization, and diversification to support Ukraine's ambitious clean energy and climate goals and address the impacts of reduced supplies of natural gas from Russia. The State Department led a decades-long U.S. government engagement to develop and expand natural gas reverse flow, west to east, routes to enhance European and Ukrainian energy security. Ukraine is now able to import natural gas from Europe, eliminating the need for Ukraine to purchase natural gas from Gazprom. You are listening to IBG News Golden, our podcast. News read by Mirai. I am Jammu hosts a session on interactive session on how to be productive. 29th November 2020 to Jammu, Anandam, the happiness center of Indian Institute of Management, IIM. Jammu organized an interactive workshop on how to be productive on 29th November at Canal Road Campus. The session was conducted by Sri Ritrik Majan, Holistic Wellbeing Coach, Healthcare Business Consultant, and Ms. Akshita. The session was well attended by the faculty, 
officers, staff, and students of IIM Jammu. The session commenced with the introduction by Dia. Mahima Raina, Chairperson, Anandam, IIM Jammu. It was followed by a welcome address by Professor Jabir Ali, Dean of Academics, IIM Jammu who welcomed Sri Ritwik Mahajan and Ms. Akshita to IIM Jammu. In his address, he asked the students to engage themselves productively, sleep on time, spoke on the different ways to be productive, do some good work, work out regularly in the gym for staying fit and healthy, various techniques for productivity enhancement, having food on time without being in hurry will pave the way for increased productivity, output and success in their individual lives. This was followed by some real-time sessions such as storytelling and some interactive mind games for engaging the students. He urged the students to think beyond, imagine the immense possibilities, be result-oriented and pen down their thoughts by finding time for introspection and themselves. He asked the students to make pen and paper their best friend for life. During his address, he also did a real-time activity where he asked the students to pen down their personal, academic, professional, and self-introspection goals. In all the activities, he undertook as part of the session, make the students understand the need to be more relaxed, to be joyful, practice the art of writing, being effortless in whatever you do leading to better productivity. His address also stressed the basic importance of being active listeners. Ms. Akshita began her session with a series of interactive activities and did a meditation activity with the faculty, officers, staff members, and students at the institute. The activity was enjoyed and liked by everyone present for the session. The vote of thanks was proposed by Dia. Ashika Agrawal, Person, Anandam, IIM Jammu. Present on the occasion were Sri Rajat Jain, Financial Advisor and Chief Accounts Officer, IIM Jammu. This is IBG News Golden, a podcast on 29th November 2022. Do come back for our next edition of podcast. Wish you all a great time ahead. You are listening to IBG News Golden, a podcast.